lies. You, you, you have heard about the efforts, for example, of Congressman Ron Paul to audit the Fed. Recently, uh, he obtained 282 other co-sponsors for his bill, so it's highly likely that there's going to be some kind of audit. His idea is that if people really start seeing what happens at the Fed, they will really be mad and eliminate the Fed. That was his first bill in February, and he, that bill has only one signer himself, no co-sponsors. Yes, I think it's HR 833. This one was more popular because of what happened recently. Uh, from the Austrian point of view, and you have to go back to how Austrians conceive economics as a science, the kind of decentralized <coughs> knowledge that they think can be <coughs> replicated by the planner. Well, all that uh, is the basis for their views on money. And their views on money is the following. Money is central for that process of decentralized exchange which uh, is generated in a free market, which is based in decentralized knowledge and creates the most for most people. And money was not an invention of uh, somebody. It was arrived at by experimentation. And the free market money is gold and silver floating one with the other. What happened is that later governments started to trick with that and it started to put a fixed rate between gold and, and silver. So they started to also inflate a little, not much, because you cannot uh, fake, to fake a, a gold is, is difficult, but they started to tweak with this. And uh, from then they move on to uh, fiat money or fiduciary money, meaning that it's based on just the confidence of the people who receive the, the note, have no backing. And then the, it started to uh, also tweak with banking, and some contracts started to be uh, changed, and uh, what the way in which they develop became uh, inflationary. So can you explain that again, what you said about tweaking with banking? Yes. Because really and truly, it was, a, it was the bankers who invented the fiat system to satisfy well, the governments and the kings so they had enough money to fight their wars. Well, the, and they were the original lobbyists, by the way. Well, that's a, that's <laughs> a point. <Okay. because laughs> and, and, and we said today, with Obama's plan in healthcare. I agree, because, but, uh, right, but, but let me explain. Yeah. The banks started that, but they needed the power of the king or whoever to bail them out, that, and, and that happened by preventing the conversion of their notes but you know, because of the expansion of credit to the king, I agree. Yeah, but, the, the, if, but if the king... <coughs> it's a, it's a complicit, yeah. I mean, it takes two to tango. Uh, the yeah. kings needed credit, yeah. cheap credit, all right. Mm -hmm. The issue notes without backing, I'll suspend the conversion. Yeah, but what, what happened though was that if you look at the history of wars during the, the ages, okay, especially for the Rothschild family, they yeah. backed those sides. Yeah. Whoever yeah. lost still paid the, the bills. Nothing different to it. Right? The, the winners paid the bills. And to show you that the strength those guys had, no matter where their um, methods of transportation travel, they could be traveling through the, the heat of the storm of the war. They were never attacked. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the system still exists today. Correct. The lobbyists are out in full force today. Can, can you imagine the, the, re the recent uh, Iraq war yeah. being financed with taxes on the current generation yeah. only? So the king. It's the same. But, uh, Kings knew very well that there is so much, they, so much trouble that they can cause their uh, um, servants because revolutions could happen. So there was a natural limit. Now that limit has disappeared. It's, what's interesting about, and this is not really related this much, but the Western democracy is in a way in terms of taxing power, 
no governments have ever had this much power over their citizenry. Like, no king ever taxed as much as you know, France or Canada or the United States. But, but there are limits. Uh, the, the same way that there were limits to the king, there are limits. And the limit is the time when the, that money that's been so debased stops being the money that the people use. In my country, they stop using the local currency and they start saving and using foreign currency and gold. Uh, then it became a crime to have gold and people were sent to jail for exchanging local currency with, uh, for US dollars. Uh, but uh, all that was long ago in the 50s and 60s. So the government learned and started to well, try to issue a new currency, a new institution they called the central bank. It started in the 60s, didn't do well at the beginning, but now it seems they are doing quite well. Still, it will take probably two more generations for that money to get respect. People are still in my country yeah. using foreign currency and, and, uh, and uh, real goods to save. But like in Germany, a lot of Germans still like to buy gold. Exactly. Because they because I remember the, the yeah, way exactly. Republic. Yeah. Yes. So money, the way modern money has been managed, is the vehicle of all our troubles. Without money considered this way, there wouldn't be credit expansions of the kind that and if they were, if they were the central bank or whoever issued that money would not be able to bail out the institutions that increase their credit. And that's the difference. Okay. If you have a money that is 100% uh, backed in something valuable and, and with intrinsic value, and uh, you don't suspend that conversion, ideally if there are more than one issuer, if one suspends, it doesn't matter, that, that guy will end up without a business. Uh, if you don't suspend conversion, then if a bank increases credit over what is prudent, nobody will pay them out. They will have to face the same uh, fate that any businessman uh, has to face, which is success or bankruptcy. And I don't see why banks are different. They shouldn't be. Because assets and the people that work in those institutions don't disappear. What happens is they go somewhere else or are managed in a different way so that they don't incur the same uh, risks. So like, this is my personal feeling, because you're talking about, and I, this is in line with probably a lot of Austria. So we had like, you know, loose policy in the dot-com bubble, then you had housing bubble. Yep. See my, and in each case you had this government like cut rates to zero and try to get people to and get ready to for the next more. bubble. Well, in my opinion, this the current bubble is the debt bubble if, of the government taking on, the, which well, will lead to like an inflation and currency correct. crisis. Could, this could be the, the mother of all bubbles. This is the mother of all bubbles because no one's going to be there to bail the U.S. government out because they won't be a 